Hello viewers, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to another big episode of 4 Drive TV. We've got all the tracks, tips and techniques to get you out there safely 4 driving, so let's get into it. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. Hi guys, I'm David. And I'm Sam from ARB. This week, we're in the Pyrenees Ranges, which is not too far from Avoca, and really looking forward to getting to some of these tracks. For those that don't know, Avoca is an easy two and a half hour drive northwest of Melbourne. And the weather when we left Melbourne was pretty good. It's looking a little bit ordinary this morning though, so we'll see how we go. Looking very ordinary this morning. We can only go four wheel driving, it'll keep the dust down, and that's what we can look forward to. Today, a lot of good weather, to say the least. We started off this morning, left camp, and the weather didn't look too bad. But then as we went on up into a couple of little tracks at the start, which at the time seemed fairly interesting, the weather started to come in and suddenly, like a lot of different spots you'll find, they suddenly start to become a bit more exciting. G'day there, Alan Johnson here from Prone Off Road Products. We've just come up from Ballarat way up towards the Avoca and Pyrenees area to go four wheel driving. Now, I guess the interesting thing is it's rained and that happens and it also dries out very quickly. So we had tracks that we did that were actually almost impossible to get up in the morning. Two hours later, we drove up them with a relative amount of ease. So and I guess the point of telling you that story is if you come in here with your Commodore thinking this is really easy, because the track in here is really, really easy and it does rain, you could be in all sorts of trouble. That's why you need a four-wheel drive. And that's why we're here with our four-wheel drives today. I've never been up this way before, have you? No, well, the Pyrenees is one of those spots that even Victorians don't generally get up to. It's a bit of a hidden gem. Danny and Simon have done some great research on the area and we believe there's going to be some great hill climbs, some slippery downhills, bit of rock and lots of challenges. Here we are, the first hill and look, the rain's been absolutely teeming. The tracks are nice and wet. We're in low range, we're ready to head down, all that sort of stuff. And Sam, would we be using lockers here or not? What, what's the go with that? Absolutely, steep downhill, particularly with a few rocks here and there. It's always good to use your rear locker in particular. When one wheel unloads coming down a hill, if you're articulating a little bit, using the rear locker will just stop that from running away and, and give you much more control of the vehicle. And it was interesting, I chose to just go with the rear locker down this section of hill. You know, there was quite a bit of manoeuvring involved. Interesting chatting to Simon when we got down the bottom, he suggested that perhaps next time give it a go with the front locker as well, just to give that extra control, especially when the front wheels are, are unloading.
How awesome is this? We've got this steep, rocky, shaly section, a couple of nice steps as they come down through here, but what we didn't expect was the rain. This is totally slippery. It's completely changed the conditions. We've got Andrew on his way down now. He's in basically a stock vehicle with stock tyres. He's going to take some guidance. We've got to keep him nice, slow and gentle, so I'm going to guide him down. Good work so far, Andrew. Slow it down a little bit. Swing it across, that's it. Well done. Back. Swing it back, that's it. Nice and gentle now. Straighten up. Straighten up as you come towards me. Straighten up. That's it. A little bit to your left. Back, 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 back. Nice and gentle. Straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up. Good work, good work. Take it nice and easy. Towards me, towards me. Okay, gentle, 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 gentle. The back's coming down. Keep it coming. That's good, that's good. Working well. Towards me a little bit, towards me. Nice and gentle. Towards me, that's it. And back to your left, back to your left. Nice and gentle now, start to straighten up a bit. Keep it straight. Good work, good work. Don't jam the brakes too hard, just keep feathering them nice and gently. Massage those brakes. That's it, bit of right hand down. Well, there you go, guys. A little bit of guidance, some careful driving, nice and slow, especially on these wet tracks. If it gets away from you, you're in big trouble, so you have to know what you're doing. Great drive from Andrew there. Let's get another car down this crazy hill. Next car, please, send them on down. A little less than two years ago, Holden released its first dedicated four-wheel drive vehicle in almost a decade, the Colorado 7. Sporting a torquey and economical Duramax diesel engine, this mid-size 4x4 also featured an effective five-link live axle rear end and a true low-range transfer case. When Holden first approached us, we quickly set about testing this newcomer to the four-wheel drive community and a trip to LD Station in remote outback New South Wales was the perfect proving ground. We followed this up with a series of other torture tests ranging from harsh rocky trails through to high country creeks and the performance left no doubt to how tough and capable the Holden Colorado 7 was. The next step was to get one of our own Colorado 7s and really push its limits with some smart accessories and some tougher trips. We started slowly kitting the beast out and everything we added improved the performance or safety. The trips got longer, the tracks got harder and the final result is a capable, economical and proven package that is just as competent at remote touring as it is at tackling some tougher tracks. The power to weight ratio of the Colorado 7 is exceptional. Performance, economy and towing are as good as anything else in its class and the mid-length wheelbase makes it a manoeuvrable, stable and capable recreational four-wheel drive. Affectionately known as the C7, we love our Colorado 7. It's taken us on some amazing tricks, surprised quite a few experienced four-wheel drivers and it's definitely earned its place in our garage.
This week, our feature motorsport is back with the crazy Italians from the Dead Dogs Off-Road Club. We've got all of the highlights from the Warn Trophy Italia as it kicks off another season of hardcore off-road winch challenge events. First up, let's follow a selection of the prologue highlights. Now that we've done the front with the forklift, we're going to bring the forklift in, we're going to lift up the back corner. The reason I want to do this is just going to show you a little bit more flex in the front end. As we lift the back up, it's going to transfer a bit more weight over the front springs. So you want to come in now, Luke, and we'll lift this corner up and I'll get a few more measurements. come down a little bit. So this is still with the sway bars connected on the front so it's a little bit of a limiting factor but I'll grab a few measurements and we'll put that in the computer. Actually come down here and have a look at this. This is probably a good way to show why sway bars in patrols are a little bit of a restriction. As you can see here, the, can you get the camera in there and have a look at this link here? As you can see, that link now is starting to go reasonably vertical. That's going to now start restricting travel in the back, even if you've got a really long shock absorber. When we go and put our new sway bar in, you'll see how much longer those sway bars are and why it makes such a big difference with a patrol. Anyway, I'll keep going and get some other measurements. All right, from here what we'll do, we'll go back down and we'll disconnect the sway bar on the front again and we'll lift this up again and I'll get those measurements as well. Do you want to go down, Luke? Josh, do you want to disconnect that front sway bar? Okay, we've got the sway bar disconnected on the front of the vehicle and you'll see a bit more articulation in the front end because we're lifting the rear up. So it is quite noticeable when you come in from either the rear and lift the rear or the front. So, and it's just purely because of the difference in the, the weight of the car, like the transfer of the weight. Luke, you want to come in and bring that up? As you can see now, we're starting to get a lot of articulation in the front here. Just come down. Now we, st we still got the shocks connected here. It's possibly those shocks will be getting near their maximum. We wouldn't know until we disconnect them. 
but for this exercise, we'll leave them on there. So just on that corner there, doing that exercise was 170 mil difference just there alone. That's another 100 mil in travel we've got here at the back. So around the same sort of figure here, and that'll be because the sway bars on this side will be limiting that a little bit. We've got another 70 mil of compression here as well. So we'll bring this car down now, and um, we'll go and do our next, next thing with it. That's all we're going to do. Um. Uh, my name's Grant, this is Jackie, and this is my Mitsubishi Triton 09 model. Some of the extras I've put on, it's a bull bar, winch, dual batteries, snorkel, exhaust, aftermarket air filter, and some Sunny Razor steel rims. Oh, I've actually put airbags in the rear, so for heavy loads. I'd still like to add heaps more mods, but yeah, the list never ends for mods. The next trip we've got plans in May, we're going around Australia, so that should be good fun for about five months, so looking forward to that. Uh, we like getting up to the high country, love getting up to high country, camping and just doing a few tracks up around there, a lot of fun. For details on the next Your Rig trip, keep an eye on the 4 Drive TV Facebook page. But for those selected, each weekly winner takes home a Berrima diesel cap, a Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine, a Dirt Comp magazine, a copy of Blitz magazine, a Manel Motors stubby holder, a Mean Mother stubby holder, a Mean Mother coffee mug, a U-Fix-It windscreen repair kit, an emergency ration of gear oil from 360 gearboxes, a complete Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit including chassis mount, a plug and play Narva driving light harness, a serve of sanitarium up and go, a stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer, a Narva pocket LED light, a Solarpod USB solar charging device from Roller Solar, a set of the legendary smart scissors and a knife sharpener from our friends at Keesler, a complete Oricom trading kit featuring two UHF radios, charging stations, microphones and batteries, a bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's basting, marinating, tasting and dipping sauce, a pair of the innovative expander pegs, a pair of large four-wheel drive TV stickers, one of the new ARB air locker t-shirts, an ARB jacket, a pair of ARB socks, an ARB cap, and it's all neatly packaged up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. Thanks Simon and Miranda, and to the TV show and all their sponsors, we've had a great day, lots of fun. Thank you very much. With the prologue done, it is time for the tougher terrain and winches to come out for this edition of the Warren Trophy Italia. 
And believe me, these guys are just as passionate about their four-wheeling as we are. This series of events from Italy is causing quite a stir across Europe and it's no wonder with such an amazing diversity of well set up off-road vehicles and some spectacular terrain. Severe rocky riverbeds and steep and top winch points were certainly the flavour for this round. Well, there's plenty more still to come from the Dead Dogs Off-Road Club of Italy. And tune in next week to see the final highlights from this round of the Warren Trophy Italia. Hello, my name's Mick. I'm here today at the Superior Engineering Short Course racing my Redline Revolt turbocharged in the single seat class. Hoping to do okay. If I win, that's even better. But we'll see how we go. This vehicle's American made machine. I imported it in 09. I've since spent thousands of dollars on upgrades. Hopefully it pays off. Looking forward to racing today. Very happy that it's close to home. We're only an hour north of Brisbane, not even that. This Revolt, it's got a 750cc turbocharged Weber engine. The engines are actually made in Germany and installed into the buggies in America. Commonly used engine, used in snowmobiles, jet skis, that type of appliance. I'd just like to thank Simon Miranda from Four Wheel Drive TV and hope that everybody that's watching today enjoys it. Thank you. Well, thank you for tuning in for another big episode of Four Wheel Drive TV. Remember, jump onto fourwheeldrivetv.com.au for all the links to our sponsors, all the events on the calendar, and of course, the series prizes. You've got to be in it to win it. I'm Simon Christie. Thanks for watching. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard, stay safe on those tracks.